Jake here for American Muscle, and today I'm taking a look at the SR Performance Cold Air Intake in Black, fitting 2010 and 2011 3.6 liter Camaros. And this intake from SR Performance is a great option for the V6 Camaro owner who's seeking a simple way to get a little more sound and performance out of their ride, all at a very budget-friendly price tag. This is a bolt-in, no-tune required intake, and if you want the benefits of the big name intakes without the big name price tag, then this is one you're gonna wanna check out. While it may not be the fanciest or the most technologically advanced intake, what we've got here is a pretty nice little piece of kit. The filter itself is a reusable multi-layer oil design, which does a great job of filtering out dirt and dust, but it also makes maintenance easy. No need to worry about replacing this filter, just clean it and re-oil it when it gets dirty and you're back on the road. It's a good money savings in the long run, and the oiled surface here also means that it's gonna pick up smaller pieces of dirt and particulates that might otherwise go through a dry filter. Now you also get this black powder-coated aluminum intake tube, which feels pretty nice in your hand. It's nice and smooth on the inside too, so you're gonna get good airflow through it. And it's gonna add a little bit of visual interest to your engine bay tube. Now these aluminum tubes also add some nice intake noise due to the resonance of metal. So you're gonna get to hear your engine pulling in that air, and in my book, that is the best part of it. I always like to seek out metal intake tubes, especially aluminum, because they provide that nice resonance. Now, speaking of interest, perhaps the most interesting part of this kit is that it actually comes with a big heat shield as well. Now, this comes in two pieces. You will have to put it together, but it's a pleasant surprise to have it included here since many of the less expensive cold air intakes don't include a heat shield, especially not one this large. So they aren't necessarily cold air intakes. Now having this piece inside of your engine bay means that the intake is gonna be able to more easily pull in cooler air as it is gonna separate the filter from the rest of the hot engine bay. Now it's not gonna be quite as efficient as a closed box intake, but you're still gonna get better throttle response and cooler air coming into your engine. That cooler air means better combustion, better combustion means more power. And since this intake does not require a tune, you can just bolt all of this together and enjoy. However, I say that with the caveat, as always, that if you wanna make the most out of your intake setup, a custom tune is gonna be the way to go as it will help you maximize the gains that you do get. Now the heat shield and the intake tube are both constructed from high strength aluminum and they're finished off in this nice wrinkle black powder coat for additional protection and good looks. The aluminum construction means that they are both light and durable and the powder coating helps with heat resistance too. So both these pieces are gonna look good and be corrosion free for a long time. And again, like we talked about earlier, that filter is a multi-layer oil design. So it too is a pretty good piece and should provide a nice upgrade versus your stock paper filter as well. Plus you get all the parts that you need for install included in the box as well, your connector pieces, and even some weather stripping for around that heat shield. So everything comes ready to go. You just gotta put it together and put it right in, but we'll talk more about install in a moment. The best part here though is probably the price. Coming in at right around $200, this is one of the least expensive intakes you can get for the 3.6 liter Camaro. But despite that budget-friendly price tag, you're still getting a pretty good quality item for your money. And as compared to other intakes on the market, you're gonna feel similar gains in overall performance. So this is gonna be a good option regardless, but especially so if your build is a bit more budget-focused. So let's talk about the install now. Now this is a rather straightforward installation, so it's gonna come in at a one out of three on our difficulty meter. You should budget around an hour to get all of this wrapped up and you'll be back on the road after that. Now like I mentioned a few moments ago, the kit does come with everything you need ready to get this done, so it's an entirely bolt-in setup. It's one that you can easily accomplish at home. But that's enough chatter from me. With that, let's go ahead and throw it over to one of our AM customers who's gonna show you how to get this installed on your Camaro. All right, so for this project, these are the tools you're gonna to need. You've got your supplied Allen wrench. You'll need that. You'll need a 10 millimeter deep socket, an eight and a six millimeter regular socket, along with your wrench, your ratchet. You'll need your eight millimeter wrench. You'll need a 10 millimeter wrench. You need either scissors or possibly a box knife, depending on if you need to cut any of the rubber seal that goes around the heat shield. You could possibly need a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver for the machine screws that come with it. You've got a 3 30 seconds Allen head. That's going to be to remove the mass airflow sensor. And I personally, I like to use a, a drill with an adapter on there for quarter inch for my sockets. That's going to be to take the screws or bolts or even the uh, hose clamps loose, tighten them, whatever you need to do. That's gonna be a list of the things that you need to get this job done. Let's get started. 
Hey folks, today we're going to be working on a 2011 Chevrolet Camaro RS. It's going to be a 3.6 liter V6. We are taking out the stock intake. We're going to be replacing it with a cold air intake. Uh, let's show you the tools that you're going to need to get this done and we'll get started. Okay, so first thing we have to do is remove this heat shield right here. To do that, you're going to take off the oil filler cap. Unscrew that and pull that out. This right here is going to slide out. Hang on to that oil filler cap. So we set that to the side, put that oil filler cap back on there. It's just gonna keep debris from going down in there and getting into your intake or messing anything else up. From there, you're gonna grab your 3 seconds Allen wrench. We'll go ahead and just remove the mass airflow sensor. It's just two screws right here. Definitely hang on to those screws and don't lose those. It's just gonna slide right out. Just kind of set it to the side. If you have any mass airflow sensor cleaner, you can clean that as well while you're doing that. Next thing we're going to want to do is grab your eight millimeter socket. And we'll go ahead and remove it from the, from the plenum here. Like I said, I use my drill. You can use a socket with a wrench and take that off. Just loosen it. You can take this off in pieces as well if you want to loosen this. What we're going to do next is we're going to take the hose off. That just goes back there. Set that to the side. Next thing you want to do is grab your 10 millimeter deep socket. You've got two bolts over here that need to be removed. One right here and one to the back. So you take it in your socket and ratchet. Get that loosened. Take it and put it on my drill. A little bit faster from the middle. Be sure and hang on to those nuts. You're going to need those later when we reinstall the next one. Now, once you've loosened it, once you've removed your hose, once you've taken off your mass airflow sensor and removed the nuts, it's pretty much should just pop right out. So you have to slide it off right here. Pull it straight up right here. Take a little bit of but it'll come right out. Okay, so once you get the old intake off, you're gonna to want to put together the heat shield. It comes with everything you need for that. You're gonna need also your eight millimeter wrench. You'll need your supplied Allen wrench. You've got two Allen head screws and two nuts to go on the back side of that. So to put that together, you're gonna to put it together like this. You line these holes up just like this. You're gonna put your Allen screw right through that hole. Get it lined up. Once you get that lined up, you'll put your nut on the back side of it. And we'll wait to tighten this until we get both of them in. Get that one in there. You're going to put your nut on the back side of that one as well. Set that. Once you get those both in there and they're still loose, you'll take your now on a wrench, you'll put it right there on that side. Then you'll take your eight millimeter wrench that we talked about. You're just gonna tighten it up. Do that to both of them. Come down to the bottom one. Do the same thing to that one. Right. Once you get that tightened up, it should look something like that. And we'll move on to the next step. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to install the tubing on your heat shield. So you're going to want to unroll that. It's supplied. And just start slowly. Put it in there. Make sure you press it in all the way. Definitely want to make sure you get it pressed in. When you come up to this corner, it might be a little difficult to make the turn, but it can be done. So you can make the turn, or if you need to cut it here, you can cut it. It's really to protect it mostly from the hood. So you come in, keep pressing it in, pressing it in. And you just keep working it around. Should, if you started at the top, just line up to right there. 
So you just make sure that you get it all pressed in firmly. All the grooves. Once you've done that, you can go install it. Okay, so next you're gonna go ahead and install your heat shield. Just slide that down in here. It's gonna be a snug fit. Just get it down in there, really good and snug. Once you get that, you're gonna need the supplied bracket, as well as the 10 millimeter bolt. Just put that on that bracket. You'll need one washer for the bolt, one washer for the nut side. So you just put that in there. And first, I'm just gonna hand tighten this nut on here just to make sure we have enough wiggle room to get it to attach to the original bolt. Once you get that on there with your hands, you're gonna grab the original nut that came off. I'm just gonna put that bracket down on there and hand tighten it as well. These are both gonna be 10 millimeters, so you'll need your 10 millimeter deep socket, your 10 millimeter wrench. Once you get those hand tightened, come back and you can go ahead and tighten those down. wrench 10 millimeter with your socket and you'll tighten that down okay get that good and tight you grab your filter as well as the adapter you got this adapter right here you got your air filter I'm just going to attach it right in there just like that and in here in a minute we'll tighten all this stuff down then you'll need your velocity stack adapter Look like this. You want to go install that filter right over here. It's going to be a snug fit, so just be prepared to move some stuff around and wiggle some stuff to get it in there. Once you get it in there, you'll take that velocity staff adapter, you'll put it over the other side of the air filter here. Okay. Once you get that on there, you'll grab a hose clamp. These hose clamps are supplied. We'll just put it back over that. Stack, uh, velocity stack adapter right there. You can go ahead and use either eight millimeter or six millimeter socket, whichever one it calls for. Or you can also use a flat blade if you need to. Okay, just go ahead and tighten this down. It doesn't have to be snug yet, too tight. We're just tightening it down to hold stuff in place. Make sure we don't lose that adapter off of our air filter. You don't want to lose that. So we'll just do it, like I said, just, just a little bit. Okay, we got it in there and holding good. You grab your tubing. You also need your Phillips head screwdriver for the machine head screws that come with it for your mass airflow sensor. You could possibly need tubing. It does come with tubing. And then you also need another hose clamp, which is going to be either a flat blade or a six millimeter. So what you'll do is set that to the side. You're going to install the hose clamp first over your velocity stack adapter right here. And you want it to be loose. You don't want it to be tight yet. So you'll come in and I would go ahead and remove these machine screws right here. These are going to be Phillips. You remove those. And you're going to slide it into your velocity stack adapter. It's going to be a little snug, but that's okay. That's good. We don't want things moving around while we're in there. So you'll get that on there. And once you do that, we'll go ahead and tighten that down just a touch with our six millimeter. just till it gets a little bit tight. You come back in and you will install your mass airflow sensor. Should slide right in. Uh, if you have any problems or anything, you might turn it over the other way and just see if it fits that way. And once you get that installed, you can take the machine screws that came with it, which are gonna be Phillips. Just install that.
that tightened on there, you can go ahead and place your hose back. It's gonna be a little snug as well. I'm gonna move on to the other part. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead and install and attach to the throttle body. You got your angle tubing right here to do that, as well as a throttle body adapter. And you'll need a couple of hose clamps. Now to do that, go ahead and replace, replace this throttle body adapter on here. It's gonna be snug. This entire thing's gonna be snug right here. And when we get the angled hose on there, but you want it to be snug so you don't have air leaks. So make sure that you get pressed all the way up against that to keep it snug. Then you'll put your uh, angle tubing, you'll grab your angle tubing and put your uh, hose clamps on. Go ahead and install those now so that way you can have them ready to tighten down whenever, whenever you get it on. It's going to be a little bit tight, all of it, which is good because you don't want air leaks. Do that. Remember we have it loose down here still a little bit, that way we have a little bit of play so we can move this around. So we get it attached all the way up over that throttle body adapter. You're going to make sure that it gets all the way up there. There we go. What you got? Good, snug, near tight fit. Make sure you got it all connected all the way around. clamps on there. Make sure it's still connected at the bottom before you go tightening your hose clamps. You might even have to loosen it to move it around a little bit, which is fine. And then once you do that, you'll take your six millimeter socket or your flat blade. You're gonna wanna tighten that on there. You wanna tighten it pretty tight. You don't wanna tighten it so tight that you break anything. Okay. You can go back over here and tighten this one down. We left it loose. Okay. From there, reinstall the cover. To do that, we're going to remove that oil filler cap we put on there to keep stuff from getting in. You should slide it back in. Once you slide it back in, Find the sweet spot to get it right back over the oil cover. To do that, you'll replace the oil filler cap, and you are done. That's going to wrap it up here for our review and install of the SR Performance Cold Air Intake in Black, fitting 2010 and 2011 3.6 liter Camaros. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, for all things Camaro, be sure to stick with us right here at AmericanMuscle.com.